the scene of the crime does not start with the regulators before us. Instead, we must look inside the bank at the bank CEOs, at the Trump era banking regulators who made it their mission again to give Wall Street everything it wanted. Monday morning quarterbacking aimed only at the actions of regulators this month is as convenient as it is misplaced, coming from those who never met a Wall Street wish list they didn't want to grant. Many who are the first to scold the regulators for their failures offer ready ears whenever bank CEOs line up at their offices complaining about out of control bank examiners. When we ask who should have known how the risks were building in these banks, we should start at the source with the executives. Silicon Valley Bank almost quadrupled in size over three years. Signature Bank more than doubled in that time. The principles here aren't complicated. Banks should be prudently managed, should be mindful of the full scope of risks they face, should diversify across companies and products. The committee must consider how these banks exploded in size in a way that was clearly unsustainable. Some explanations will focus on complicated sounding concepts like balance sheet, balance risk, and moral hazard, and stress test, and liquidity set, liquidity ratios. Really, though, it comes down to more basic concepts, hubris, Entitlement, greed, and always, always, always with big paydays at the end at the, for the executives at the top. The signature, signature Bank found itself in the middle of a Sam Bankman Freed's crime spree at the crypto exchange FTX. The bank let him open multiple accounts. They ignored red flag after red flag. It's all just a variation of the same theme, the same root cause of most of our economic problems. Wealthy elites do anything, anything to make a quick profit and pocket the rewards, and when their risky behavior leads to catastrophic failures, they turn to the government. They turn to the government asking for help, expecting workers and taxpayers to pay the price, and too often workers do. Even though no taxpayer money is being used to save these depositors, I understand why Americans are angry, even disgusted at how quickly the government mobilized when a bunch of elites in California were demanding it. I'm looking forward to hearing from our financial watchdogs today. We'll be watching them to make sure they assess the damage, hold accountable those responsible, fix what is broken. Last, I ask my colleagues to work together to make sure that our financial system is stronger after this crisis. Americans have watched the same pattern over and over and over again. A crisis occurs, some of us push, push for reforms. If we're lucky, we'll be able to seize the moment and actually pass some. But then the bank lobbyists go to work, and they are so good at their jobs. Politicians spend the ensuing years rolling back reforms right up until the next crisis. Banks, like any other businesses, must manage their risk and be good stewards for their customers. But unlike other businesses, banks are highly regulated. Sometimes banks even have their regulators sitting in their banks and continually monitoring the risk and activities, as is the case with Silicon Valley Bank. For the last two and a half weeks, the regulators have consistently described Silicon Valley as unique and highly idiosyncratic, meaning the warning signs should have been flashing red and SVB should have stood out as what it was. Absolutely a problem child, clear as a bill were the warning signs. How, how can you ask Congress for more authority with a straight face? To that end, I hope to learn how the Federal Reserve could know about such risky practices for more than a year and fail to take definitive corrective action. By all accounts, our regulators appear to have been asleep at the wheel. I know in hindsight it's 2020, but when you hear rumors that this process was delayed because the White House doesn't like mergers in any shape, form, or fashion, it makes you wonder what actually is going on. Sometimes when it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's just a duck. Things remain clear to me regarding SVB. First, the bank was rife with mismanagement. Second, there was a clear supervisory failure. Our regulators were simply asleep at the wheel. And finally, 
President Biden's reckless spending caused 40-year high in inflation, and the country, as well as the bank, experienced tremendous loss. Two failed institutions, in both of those cases, the strongest bids we received